In position, Captain. IGR 140288. Right. Take her up eight fathoms. Prepare surface stations. Low tanks one through six. Yes, sir. Steady at eight fathoms, sir. Right. in sight. Prepare the surface. Surface stations. Maintain visual and radar. Watch for surface vessels. Where are we, Lieutenant? Uh, right here, Captain. Fine. Well, we've made good time. Hover cruise at 20 knots. Steer a course 126. Stair 126, speed 20 knots. Tracking aerial set up, sir. Right. This is skydiver to control. We have surfaced. In position to check the satellite. Roger, skydiver. What's happening, Captain? Well, I've got a feeling it's pretty important. Commander Strake is playing this one close to his chest. Signal. It looks good. I have a radar sighting. Bearing 279. Right. Looks like a freighter. Take it down. Yes, sir. Dive, dive, dive. <laughs> Skydiver to shadow control. Shadow control. We had to crash dive to avoid a surface vessel. What was it? A freighter. Well, I'm sure they didn't see us. Before we dive, we did manage to pick up the satellite. Its orbit looked good. Thank you, Skydiver. I'll tell Commander Straker. How far is it now? Well, around eight miles. Do you think it'll work? Well, I think so. But then I always was a... An eternal optimist. Four minutes, Doctor. Right. Check area latitude. Ten seconds to transmission check, sir. Smack on the nose. The first transmissions are coming through, sir. Signal strength 012147. What's the distortion? Minimal. Decimal 072. Fine. Keep tracking. I 
think Dr. Young was a little put out at not being able to see the results. Yes. Security's a word I don't like to throw at a man who goes out of his way to cooperate. Maybe we could send him a couple of prints. Let's wait and see if there's anything on the tape to print. All set up, Ford? Yes, sir. Look at that. Look at that detail. That's taken from nearly 500 miles out. Fantastic quality. breakthrough. See this one here. Range 490 miles, magnification times 250. It's like a helicopter shot. Well, I'm convinced. We'll throw everything we've got into getting this project approved. How's it going, Kelly? I'm pretty well, Commander. In fact, the test run was so successful, there are very few modifications needed. Well, that's quite a setup. When can I tell the commission we'll be ready to go? Three, four weeks. We just have to check out the link systems. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. Oh, Commander. Could I have a word with you? Do you mind, John? No, not at all. Well, what's on your mind? Tomorrow you're going to ask the Astro Space Commission for a billion dollars. Yes, for one of the most important projects Shadow has ever undertaken. Sure. It's the first item on the agenda. There are 53 others. Mine's number 52. It comes right after how much do we spend on new coffee machines. Look, all I'm asking for is $50,000, and the chances are I won't get it. I don't see how I can help you, Kelly. I think my project's important, sir. You could help me. Oh, now, wait a minute. You've done a great job in the device. But you're a group. Group? There are just two of us, Commander. But with that $50,000, we could complete the development on the stereo scan. I'd like to help. But I think you're looking the wrong way, Kelly. Space. That's where you should turn your talent. Well, I hope you get your billion. Oh, I'll get it. It's a space project. Pretty. But don't pull a bulldozer job in here, Straker. I won't have to. I'm 
Nice to see you again. Gentlemen. The Financial Committee, the Astro Space Commission is in session. Now, you all know Commander Straker. And by the billion dollar cost estimate beside it, you will have realized that the first project on the agenda is his. Thank you, General. Uh, gentlemen, this drawing shows a standard B-142 space probe. Now, the project will use a modified version of this spacecraft. I'd like you to notice the domed structure here. Now, from this cross-section, you'll see that it incorporates a device which, in layman's terms, can best be described as an electronic telescope. The principle is very simple. It is a telescope which, instead of using light, operates with a stream of electrons. And it's capable of scanning with a magnification of up to times 2,500. Lieutenant Masters. These shots of the Earth were taken from an orbit between 450 and 500 miles out. The electron telescope scans an area, radios the information back to Earth, and the impulses are transmitted into these pictures. And as you can see, the definition is as good as any normal photograph. The tracking and homing mechanisms are also very elaborate, but they've been fully tested and will enable the probe to home in on the planet from two million miles out. I'm sorry to disillusion you, Straker, but I can get you great shots of the Earth with a two-dollar camera from a balloon. Yes. I should have been more explicit, General. By the planet, I didn't mean Earth. The purpose of the project, gentlemen, is to enable the probe to track and follow a UFO to its origin. To home in and get high-definition close-ups of the alien planet. Now, my project is to launch a standard or a modified B-142 space probe and place it into a parking orbit around the moon. Shadow don't have those kind of facilities. No. We would have to use NASA for the launch. Now, the telescope and the electronics are still on the secret list, so they would have to be fitted by moon-based astronauts after the probe had been placed in a parking orbit. Foster and bring him into my office, will you, Alec? Well, did they approve it? We've got ourselves a deal. We even got a time slot from NASA. Launch 712 in four weeks' time. Well, that's great. Yes, we could be a lot closer to some of the answers. Well, there she is, ready to go. Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot in these last weeks. Listen, have you got a pen? Hmm? Hmm. I thought I'd just write out the check for 50,000. <laughs> well, that's all right. I can cash in some of the family jewels. Anyway, there's always next year or the year after. Well, she's all yours, Lieutenant. I hope we get you those shots. Yeah. I'll see you around. Lieutenant Masters, report for pre-lunar medical right away. Long day? Long month. 
Well, I think we're set. Well, listen, I'm uh, thinking of taking Keith Ford with me to Moonbase. Good idea. You're going to need all the help you can get. Yes. Well, listen, Alec, you'd better keep all Earth lunar communication down to a minimum. Sure. What's the situation on the launch? The launch? Well, I think we can safely leave that with NASA. out on the master computer. Electronic readout. A okay. Countdown continues at T minus four hours, 32 minutes, eight seconds. This is our power. Go. Water system. Go. Fuel system. Go. Elemetry. Go. T minus three minutes. We have green on all readouts. T minus 60 seconds. We have go for ignition at minus 20. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. Main stage ignition. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. We have liftoff. C plus fifty five. T plus 6248 T plus 65 18 miles down It looks good NASA reports the launch is successful sir Right control to lunar module, switch to automatic LLS, we'll bring you in by radio beam. Touchdown, minus 20 seconds. Right. Oh, you two go along. Paul, let's go to control. I want to check on that space probe report. Hello, Commander. 
Lieutenant, Nina, Joan. How's the flight? Very smooth, thank you. How's everything here? Fine. Well, Lieutenant, do you have the space probe report? Oh, good, good. Apogee zero decimal one two four below requirement, but we can easily correct it. I've uh, worked out a rough schedule for the astronauts. We understand the probe is to be modified in space. Well, this is great. Well, we'll have to go through it together, of course. I did say it was a rough schedule, sir. Excuse me, sir. Because of the radio security clampdown, no one on Moonbase knows the purpose of Project Discovery, as it has been codenamed. But I do know how hard some of you have worked on it. As you know, a modified B-142 space probe has been placed into a parking orbit around the moon. Now, the first phase is to fit specialized equipment into the probe. This equipment has already been shipped to moon base from Earth. Phase two is to maneuver a UFO into a position where the probe can be activated into a flight pattern which will enable it to follow the alien back to its origin. When the probe gets within two million miles of its target, it will start to transmit. With luck, we should get the first close-up shots of another world. It will be our first step in bringing the fight back to the alien planet. Thank you. An exciting situation, Lieutenant. Yes, it is. Look, you'd better get things set up as fast as possible. Right. Uh, who's going out in the probe? Colonel Foster and Lieutenant Masters. control to lunar module your flight pattern is go for rendezvous right confirm one decimal four zero two two four one seven roger control we have visual contact we're in position Onboard computer reads go for spacewalk. We have green on all systems. Moon base control to lunar module. Confirm go for spacewalk. Send out the camera on my signal.
about to board satellite. Condition green. Stage one complete. Control to space team. Roger. Great work, Paul. Pass my congratulations onto your team. Now, I've asked you all here to explain the next and most vital phase of the operation. Now, the space probe is in orbit. The equipment has been installed and fully tested. Lieutenant Ellis? The uh, problem is to force a UFO into an orbit complementary to the space probes. Then we can activate the tracking systems on the B-142 and enable it to latch onto the UFO. This will involve scheduling the interceptors very precisely. We've made a computer study of UFO approaches and the general pattern is marked, as you can see. Now, Lieutenant Ellis has compiled an interceptor schedule, but a lot of the decisions will have to be made on the spot. Does that mean we have to play this one by ear? Right. Isn't that dangerous? It involves a certain risk, Colonel. A calculated risk, Lieutenant, based on a careful weighing of human factors as much as logic. Well, all we have to do now is wait for a UFO. Red alert. UFO bearing 142 blue. UFO maintaining course. This is control. I have a red alert. I repeat, a red alert. Have UFO on positive track. 142 blue. Speed, Sol 8 decimal 35. 140, 139. Sit has just confirmed. It's coming in on the predicted flight path. Good. Well, she's all yours, Lieutenant. Okay. This is control to interceptors. Immediate launch. Repeat. Immediate launch. Right, let's go. Controller will be Lieutenant Ellis. Flight plans will be relayed by Lieutenant Ford. UFO maintaining course. Speed Sol minus 8.35. UFO maintaining course and speed. Stand by for onboard computer read in. 00102. 1319 0124. Input N. Roger control. UFO maintaining course. Bearing 142 blue. Range 18 million miles. Seventeen million miles. Entering area red. 081. There it is. Changing course. UFO entering area red, 084, speed, Sol 8 decimal 37. We'll have to readjust the schedule. Right. Compute for new flight plan. Right, sir.
interceptors stand by for new flight plan. 042, 148. 2148. Increase speed to Sol. 1 decimal 127. Leader to turn 3. Alter course to 2148. Roger, leader. Interceptors losing contact, sir. We've got to turn it. If we use a detonation here, the UFO will be forced to swing away onto this sort of a course. Tell the interceptors to explode a missile in area blue. 128. Control to interceptors. Break formation. We'll relay new flight plans. Control to interceptors. This our timing, 15 decimal 18 seconds. Thank you, Control. Commencing missile sequence. Firing minus 5 decimal 2 seconds. Positive. It's altered course. UFO entering area blue 132. Maintaining speed. Crossing into blue 133. It's coming round just right. It's accelerating, sir. Decimal 38. 8, decimal 39. We have to use a second missile, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Compute it. Yes, sir. Well? I think a missile in area blue 27 should do it. Order the missile launch. Yes, missile timing. One, zero, four. Zero, one, eight. Eight, two, six. Roger. Detonation confirmed, sir. UFO veered to new course. Three, zero, one. Compute B142. We'll link up in four, three seconds. How do you feel? Fine, thanks. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Yes, I'd like that. How do you like your coffee? No sugar. Here we are. Thanks. Well, uh, here's to Project Discovery. Cheers. You know, I want to thank you, Gay, for all the hard work you put into this project and the long hours. You know, I think, I think you push yourself a little bit too hard. You're doing a fine job, Gay. A man's job, but you don't have to do it any better because you're a woman. And don't ever forget, you're a very attractive girl. Thanks for the coffee. And thank you. Lieutenant?
Colonel Foster. Sir. When do we leave? 1800 hours tomorrow, sir. Good. Let me give you a piece of advice, Paul. Don't ever judge a situation by the end of a conversation. Lunar module takeoff, minus 18 minutes. I just come in to say thank you, girls. When will the first pictures be through, sir? Well, the experts tell me four months, so let's hope that they're worth waiting for. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye, Commander. Okay. Next time you're on Earth furlough, drop in and see me. Yes, I will. <laughs> Coming through now, sir. Right. Feed it through the decoder straight into printout. Right, sir. the preliminary report in 24 hours. Yes, sir. We've got the answers, Alec. We've got the answers. Commander? I did say 24 hours, Kelly. Yes, sir, but we haven't had time to type up a report. And give it to me verbally. There was a fault in the device. A fault? Yes, sir. The range and magnification on each shot wasn't transmitted. And just what is that supposed to mean? That means, except for superfluous detail, these shots tell us very little. Look, what are you trying to sell me, Kelly? Well, look at that. Look at that detail. But it must tell you something. Yes, but was it taken from 500 or 100 miles? With a magnification of 1 or 1,000? Oh, come on. Look, if I take a picture of a, of a girl from 3 feet or 100 yards, I can still see it's a girl. I want to show you something, Commander. Now, whatever the range, that's a shot of the alien planet. A close-up of the surface. Yes. And I'm no expert. But that must be some form of vegetation. Some form of vegetation, you think? You could be right. Well, why don't we take another look? Now, let's pull back. You'll notice the curvature of the horizon. Well, surely from that we can work out an approximation of the overall size. Let's pull back a little more. What is this, Kelly? Some sort of joke? You said earlier, Commander, you could recognize a girl from three feet or a hundred yards. What about when the shot is from 30 inches, with a magnification varying from zero to 10,000? Hello, Commander. Lieutenant. Thank you. You can relax now. Uh, hold it there a moment, will you, Lieutenant? Magnification zero times ten, one hundred, a thousand.
not the most flattering of pin-ups, nor the best way to spend a furlough. Thanks for all your help, Gay. Pleasure. Goodbye, Commander. Lieutenant. Yes. I'm beginning to see the problem. I'd like you to have a look at that monitor. What would you say this is, Commander? Well, before your demonstration, I would have said a lava formation of some kind. Actually, it's a section of fractured polystyrene. It's incredible. Here's another. From the structure in the center, it could be a building. In fact, Commander, it, it's a grain of pollen. Another shot which could well be taken for a strange rock formation. Yes, I have to agree. Puffed wheat, sir. Without knowing details of range and magnification, the lava flow becomes a piece of shattered polystyrene, magnification times 2155. A pollen grain becomes a futuristic building, and a grain of puffed wheat, a rock formation. Tell me, how are these shots produced? Well, microphotography is well established, but the secret is three-dimensional effect, the depth of focus. It's been known for 25 years, but it needs development. So, while we've all been looking into outer space, men like you have been sitting on this, inner space, your pet project. Yes. It's a vast area, almost completely unexplored. But I believe it'll give us the answers to some of the basic questions about the universe, and even life itself. Well, maybe we've all been looking the wrong way. You know, when you really think about it, everything in this office, every object, even a speck of dust contains billions of particles. And each particle is made up of millions of atoms. A whole universe within these four walls. I walk along a beach, stand with millions of grains of sand beneath my feet. Is everything we know, this office, our world, the vastness of space itself, inside one grain of sand on another beach, in another world, in another universe. Space is infinite, both ways, outward and inward. You can tell Kelly you'll get his appropriation. Maybe more than he expects. I get the picture. A greatly magnified picture, General. Mm -hmm.